next thing it's important to do is to measure wedge and here's my very simple wedge gauge I put together I have two large uh, uh, nuts that I hot melted down and I have three small ones that I, my uh, part will lay on lens or mirror or whatever and so what you want to do is measure the the, uh, the height out on the edge so I'm going to carefully set this on the sets on the three small ones and you bump it up against the large one large ones and you take measurements around the the edge so and you want to look for the high high spot and want to look for the low spot numbers are getting bigger there and it's starting to go down looks like that's going to be a high side here and then opposite of that should be the low side pretty much so this is plus the side's thicker than that and you can subtract the difference and see how much wedge you actually have Having measured my wedge, we want to start to correct for wedge the very first thing. And put some more grid on here. Get a little bit of water, soapy water. And now from the uh, side that I marked, plus is this thick side you want to grind heavy on that side and put by putting accent and pressure on it so what I do is basically use my thumbs to push down heavy on this side and with nothing over here and this will grind more material off of this side to reduce the wedge so you make it. the same strokes as before And you kind of have to play that by ear, you know, depending on how much you have to, to change it by, um, the, the longer you do it like that. But eventually you want to go back to, to rotating the part and, uh, and uh, uh, keep, keep rotation so you don't develop any astigmatism. Um, and again, you want to keep rotating the, the lap. This is a lot easier to do on a machine, actually, when your bottom spinning is rotating. You just sit there and hold it while, while it's spinning underneath it and uh, do, do the strokes like that. Makes it a lot easier. It's, it's a lot easier to do it by machine than it is um, here uh, by hand. Now, as I said, it's a whole lot easier to do um, reduce a wedge if you're working by a machine. So I'm going to do this part by machine. Again, I'll put some uh, using 40 micron and a little bit of soapy water. Get some bubbles going here. See them or not? They're there. So I'm going to turn my machine on. This is the heavy side of the wedge, and I'm going to let it run and let it spin, and put pressure on this edge as it runs. You hear the noise that it's working. Oops. Some more time here. Noise. And again, you have to judge how long you need to do this to work on it, to work down the wedge. And then run a little bit, and then check it again. I'm also going to run it. Let the machine do the lapping for myself.
Yeah, just a little bit more. Drip. If you're working a lens uh, to a prescription and you need to know the radius very accurately, you'll need to have a spherometer. You don't need this um, if you're just making a Newtonian telescope. Um, but for a lens, you may need to have a high accuracy spherometer. So this is one I built. It's a digital um, gauge to a micron accuracy. And I have three feet uh, that are just cap screws with um, sapphire balls glued on. So um, you have to be able to calibrate it. And there's, there's two ways you can do it. The hard way is to measure with calipers. You can measure the the feet distance from all three legs of the calipers and go through the trigonometry to figure out what the radius would be. Simpler way is to get a known curve of maybe a, an old telescope mirror or um, uh, something that ha a, a piece of glass that has a known radius on it and use that to calibrate it. And then so you want to zero out your spherometer with a flat side, and the back side is flat, so you zero that out. Push the button. And then um, measure your known curve and record the, the sag of your known curve. And with the diameter, if you know the diameter of the balls on your feet, the known curve uh, radius and the, known, the sag of the, this known curve. Then you can go. You can plug that into the spreadsheet, and that'll be your calibration. And then simply measure your part. Plug this uh, sag value into the program, and then you will have the radius of this part to very high accuracy. That's the way I, I do it. Okay, uh, so I probably spent about 12 minutes running this. Um, mirror on 40 micron and now the question is do I go on to a finer grid and the first question uh, well if this was a lens definitely not because uh, you, if you've got any wedge and I had about 80 microns of wedge in this which I haven't eliminated yet that's too much you need to have well under uh, under 10 microns of wedge to go on to, to finer grid uh, for a mirror, it doesn't matter. You can probably have a half a millimeter of, of wedge, and you know, it's not going to matter too much. But for a lens, you can't go any. You've got to you got to fix the wedge before you go on. Now you have with a lens, you can do it on either side, and that, and um, whether you fix the wedge on this side or the other side may depend on what the radius is, because you want your radius to be good too. At this point, you want to be your radius probably within. Uh, Five, plus or minus five microns of your sag value. If your part's on the bottom it, it, and your lap's on top, you, you really can't uh, work on the wedge. Well, that way you want to work on the wedge when it's on top. So it may depend which side you take the wedge out on may depend on um, if the part's on the bottom or on the top. But um, so. Um, uh, but I, as I said, there's there's no problem with wedge in this part. So the next thing is um, is the radius, and like I said, uh, you, if, if you know if you're working to a prescription, you probably need to be within uh, within five microns before you go on to finer um, finer grit. Um, for this mirror, it really doesn't matter too much. This is going to you know. Uh, there's no no critical value for the radius, so I'm okay on the radius. Um, uh, but what about center thickness? Uh, I haven't mentioned that at all. And for a mirror, you want you want to leave as much center thickness as you can, so that's not a problem. For a lens, um, actually, most uh, amateur telescope projects for lenses aren't really that critical for center thickness. But you need to know what the center thickness is. And then maybe plug that value into the, uh, the optical design 
and maybe you have to make a tweak on the radius. And it's good to know at this point what the center thickness is, so if you have to change the radius, you go ahead and do that at this time. Again, for this mirror, the radius is fine. I haven't changed it up very much. And it doesn't change a lot in fine grinding. But it does change, and, 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 and so you need to be aware of it. The radius is critical. Uh, my wedge is okay. My radius is okay. Um, so the, the last question is, do I, um, is, the, is the surface cleaned up enough? I mean, am I ready to go on? And it looks pretty good, it looks nice and even, but unfortunately, uh, because I haven't run it long enough, there are still a few pits left over. And um, if you take, uh, you can't really see them well uh, on the video, I'm sure, but. If you take a, a good high-powered loop, you want to go over every every square inch of this. You can get get down close to see, and anything that, that glows like a bright star on on the field, you want to look at. And if you can wipe it away, it's it's dust. Um, the, the magnifier will show it to be if it doesn't move to be a pet. And and I've already marked it here. But you take a magic marker. Now I've got one right here. You can't see, but make a uh, marker on the back, right, uh, right behind the, the part, so that when you go on and, and uh, finish lapping, and that part disappears, if that's the if that's the, the the biggest pit that you have there, all your other 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 pits will be gone too. So that's that's a good uh, tip to do, is to to mark the back side of your mirror for any pits, and clean those up before you go on. So, um, when you're ready to go on to the next finest grade, <clears throat> you want to clean everything up. You want to take a nail brush, clean up uh, your lap, and get everything, all the grit that you can out of, out of, um, um, out of your lap. The penny lap is good for that because it's, it's hard for stuff to get stuck in there. <clears throat> Change your uh, bubble wrap and, and take and hose, hose down your your board and get everything cleaned up because uh, you don't want any speck of uh, coarse regret laying around the accident. You pick it up, you can waste a lot of time. So, <clears throat> oh, I'm uh, I'm ready to go on, except uh, I've got a, probably another five, five or maybe ten minutes of grinding on this from 40 to to go on to the next stage. Okay, so. Um, I finished up here. Uh, I did five more minutes on on 40, and then uh, 15 minutes and on 20, and 15 minutes on nine. And um, want to remind you, I, I did exactly the same th thing as I did on 40, but I want to remind you to make sure that you eliminate your wedge completely when you're on. Um, by the time you're on 20 micron. And um, make sure to do a pencil test or a sharpie test each time. And when you uh, when you're all finished, you should uh, give it a good look over with the the flashlight and a loop. And look at it at a grazing incidence too. Let me uh, let me show you what that looks like. Should be a so yeah. If you look look at the mirror and lay it down at a grazing incidence, you can see. Uh, a nice even reflection all the way across. So you kind of, uh, you get a low incidence, you get a reflection. Higher up it don't, but it should be nice and even all the way across. And it's 9 micron. Now you can go on to 5 micron if you want. Some some folks do. It polishes a little bit faster, and maybe even finer than that. But I stay at 9 because it's um, it's also riskier to go to a finer grit too because um, it, it, it's just more likely to cre uh, create a scratch. So, um, so I'm going to stop at 9 micron and I'm going to be ready to start up polishing.